Welcome back into The Samplist, and as always, it's great to have your company once again. My name's Greg Ravel. Today, we're reviewing the latest release from the team over at SoundPaint, Adastra Ensemble Strings. Adastra Ensemble Strings is a comprehensive string library for the free SoundPaint engine. It comes with four string sections, violins, violas, cello, and basses, plus there's a full set of ensemble patches for the entire string orchestra. It also comes with a set of ambiences that allows you to provide some unique colour to your compositions when using Adastra. And the string sections were recorded with 11 violins, 8 violas, 6 cello and 4 basses, all recorded in a beautiful stone church. There's a full complement of articulations for each instrument, including arcs, shorts, sustains, legatos, as well as effects and even some creative hybrid patches, which we'll see later have some interesting possibilities. You can purchase each of the string libraries, the violins, violas, cellos and basses separately for $30 each, or you can get the entire bundle for $90. And with the full bundle, it clocks in at a massive 61.78 gigabytes of content. And before we jump into today's video, a quick shout out to Trolls and the SoundPaint team for kindly making this library available for today's review. With that said, SoundPaint has not had the chance to review or provide any input into this video. And that's because at The Samplist, we pride ourselves on our independence with all our reviews. That's our promise to you. And finally, if you like our videos, please like, subscribe and share with your friends. It really does help the algorithm to find other like-minded composers like yourself. And that way, we all benefit as a community, composers and vendors alike. Let's fire up the door and we'll dive right in. Hey, so here we are, SoundPaint and Adastra Ensemble Strings. Now, for those who aren't familiar, SoundPaint is the free engine that you can download from SoundPaint and you use it to house any of the instruments that you have purchased from SoundPaint. And today we're having a look at Adastra Strings. You can think of SoundPaint, the engine, as a little bit like Contact in the sense that it's a container that you use to load up your patches and control with various parameters. Now today is not going to be a detailed in-depth overview of what the SoundPaint engine itself is capable of. Trolls and the team over at SoundPaint have done a fabulous job and I'm going to refer you to their YouTube channel if you want the detailed overview of all the features of what the SoundPaint engine can provide. Today is going to be about me showing you around to give you, as I say, enough to be dangerous. Over here on the left allows you to select the patches that you have in highlighted in white against a darkened gray or all those libraries that you currently own. And in my case, I own just the Adastra strings. You also get a free piano that comes with sound paint. And also there's a series of ambiences that come with uh, Adastra strings and I'll show you them shortly. I won't go into any great detail here, but there is a series of functions here that allows you to select your patches. You can favorite them. You can produce or select rather individual parts. You can mix and match any of the parts from any of the programs to create your own hybrid instruments, which in of itself is actually one really powerful feature about the SoundPaint engine, the ability to mix and match across different instruments if you so wish. Obviously, you can also mix and match different parts within the same family or the same library. In this case, Adastra Ensemble Strings. Over here, we have Effects Rack. There's an Effect Rack A and Effect Rack B, some effects, and there's an arpeggiator. There's also something over here called the Matrix, which I will not talk about today on two counts. One, it's apparently quite complex and it's not necessarily what you have to have as a beginner. And on second count, I've got no idea about it because I haven't really looked too deeply into it myself. Racks can contain different instruments you can select, or beg your pardon, different effects you can select. Effects from delays, filters, phases, you can select from LFOs, control the ADSRs, legato switches, there's a master. You can choose um, the ability to control the timing of your samples. There's even something called a tips, for example, and you can load each of these individual uh, effects into your rack, a total of two different racks together. The effects themselves, the classic delay, distortion, EQ, filter, bit crush, reverb, etc. Choose to your heart's content. Again, I won't be going through them in any detail because the videos already exist over at SoundPaint for you to have a look at. 
And before we dive in and take a listen, here's how all the strings are laid out. You get a full sections library. You get basses, cellos, violas, and violins. And within each one of those voices, you get a different grouping of arcs, there's effects, there's hybrids, key switches, legatos, shorts, and sustains, all neatly classified together for ease of navigation. So let's take a listen. I'm going to load up, or indeed I've actually loaded up from the full ensemble, all full sections from the arcs, arc beauty. Here's what it sounds like. Really rich, really beautiful. You can feel it coming off the page. Beautiful under your fingers. Sounds fantastic. You can hear, obviously, the volume differences there because I was hitting keyboard harder, so it's very velocity sensitive, which is really fantastic, very rich. Let's continue. Let's have a listen to, say, Arc the Far Touch. So a little bit more further away from the microphones, I imagine. What about maybe from the effects rack? Now, this one's really quite interesting. This whole category is because it it's taking advantage of the features of the sound paint engine. And as I said, I'm not gonna go into any detail, but let's say that it gives you the capability to manipulate the underlying samples. You can distort them, change the pitch, the tone in all manner of ways. And a Doppler effect, for those who aren't familiar, that Doppler effect is that sound you might recognize if you're on a train and you're passing through a level crossing, you can hear the bells clanging as you go past, decreasing in frequency as you go past. Here's what it sounds like. So as you can see there, I was moving the mod wheel and you can note that parameters such as micro pitch and volume is shaking. These are all been configured through MIDI CC automation to be responsive, responsive to the mod wheel. And that's what's giving that slight pitch bend to give it a bit of a strange feeling. Um, in the same category, effects sustain reveal. This is really quite interesting too. A lot of cool opportunities for sound design there. Tension, I think this is kind of cool for those who love a bit of tension in their scores.
Again, using the mod wheel to change the pitch. Again, all this is available to us to manipulate. Again, I'm going to refer you to the YouTube channel over at SoundPaint. They've got all the details in store. Shall we continue? This is fun. I always get stuck into this. I realize I've got so much to get through. I hope I don't lose you. I just want to give you a flavor of what this is all about. Um, pizzicato brush under the hybrid category. Lovely. What's a star shower? So I think the another thing about sound paint, you have to, um, sometimes you have to abandon the way you think about a string library. As you can see there, the features allow you to distort the samples. It almost sounds quite synthesizer-like, if you like. So that's really, really powerful stuff if you want to explore and stretch and manipulate these samples. So abandon all your preconceptions about this being a traditional string library. And I won't lie, this was one of the things I struggled with at the very start. My brain was so used to thinking of string libraries to be that traditional full articulation of a, what a full string symphony can do, but the sound paint engine allows you to do a whole lot more. Okay, cool. I'm going to, for this legatos, I'm going to skip over and let's go not from the class of full sections that we've been exploring, but let's dive into some of the individual voices. Let's have a listen to the cellos. I'm going to choose from the legatos, legato one, MJ. That's really nice, very full. What's this one? I'm gonna go for the CS, which I assume is consort. So let's load that up. The consort version. Working the mod wheel. Now, one of the lovely things about the legatos with Adastra strings is that you can play the legatos either monophonically or polyphonically. So monophonically, you just heard a single note playing up and down the range of the cello, but it also supports polyphonic, which is playing legato with two notes at the same time. Now, this will really challenge my ability to play live two notes in legato at the same time, but let's give it a go and here's what it sounds like. Two notes at the same time, fully polyphonically. Here we go. Let's dive in. Here's one, a portamento legato. 
So let's load that up again in the cello, but you can have this obviously with viola and basses and also the violins, but you'll hear the natural portamento now. So that rounds out the legatos. Now, before I jump into the shorts, let me jump over to the violins because there's a feature of the sustains that I'd love to show you. And it's a feature that's unique to the sound paint engine. And it's also a feature, I won't lie, that frustrated the daylights out of me before I really understood what it was about. And in order to show you what this is, I'm going to go to the ensemble violins, to the sustains, and I'm going to load up the sustain patch, sustain MJ. Now, for those who want to know, I believe that MJ, the TF, the initials at the end of each patch represents the initials of the person at Soundpaint that designed the patch. So I don't know who MJ is. I'm assuming TF is Trolls Throlman the guy who runs sound paint don't know who mj is all right but let's have a listen to the violin sustain As you can see, they're lovely, very strong, very powerful sustained up and down the scale or the range rather of the violin. Beautiful stuff. But here is something that's really quite interesting. You have the ability in sound paint or even out of the box for a lot of the programs, the patches, you can actually play well and truly outside the range of the natural instrument, in this case, a violin. So what you just heard me play is within the natural range of the violin. Now a violin will go down as low as an open G, which it is, if I'm not mistaken, there's that G there. Now ordinarily, obviously you can't go lower than that open G on a violin, but at sound paint, you can. So here is the violin, and I'm gonna keep going down and down through the range. a full three octaves lower than the violin. Can we go lower? You can. But eventually, it starts to get a little bit silly. So what this in effect means that you can play your violin patch like an ensemble patch that is the full bass cello viola and violin range if you can reach it with your fingers so what i'll play now for you is just me noodling around with the adastra ensemble violin sustain patch nothing but the violin patch so i'm going to take my keyboard back up through the octaves to the natural range and I'll now attempt to play live with this one patch.
That was all a single violin patch. So there you go. That's a really powerful feature that allows you to not only mix and match across different libraries, but you can also manipulate the fundamental samples like the violin we just showed, which is way ludicrously outside its natural range. And that can be really, really powerful. I won't lie, I, I really struggle with that feature at first. And that might be because I'm, I'm traditionally thinking of string instruments to be a faithful representation of the string orchestra, being from basses, cellos, violas, through to the violins. And I keep saying to myself, why would I need a violin that can play in a bass range if I've got a bass? But here's something that kind of clicked in my brain after a little while, and it was the recognition that if you're playing samples that have been stretched and manipulated that come from the original violin, they can sound a little tighter, if you will. I don't know if that makes sense, but because they're actually derived from the same instrument, when you pitch stretch them, they sound somewhat unique and a little bit tighter and a little bit more harmonically sound, if you will. Now, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but I thought I'd leave that thought with you because I found it a struggling concept, but I'm starting to warm up and get around to it. But it does give you the idea of the power of what sound paint can really, really do. Okay, so to round out the section on sustains while I'm here, here's a quick look at some of the sustains. Uh, you have the sustain non-vib to vib. Let's collect this one. It sounds like this. Again, drawing your attention to the parameters in this case, the micro pitch. So some vibrato simulated, if you will, by just ever so rapidly oscillating between the micro pitch. Nice, really nice. I'm going to go from a sustain to a tremolo. Beautiful. While we're here, we have a trill, a major trill. Sweet. And just to round it out, the minor trill. Beautiful. That rounds out what the sustains can do in the violins. And obviously the same uh, 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 range of sustains are available across not only the violins, but obviously with the violas, likewise the cello and the bass. Now, let's have a quick listen to some shorts, shall we? And in order to listen to the shorts, let's have a listen to a section of the string orchestra we haven't had a look at yet, that being the basses. So I'm going to go and visit within the bass section, migrate down to shorts. I'm going to give you a listen to start with the Mercato. <laughs> So that's not me lifting my finger off the key to release the note. That is the full length of the note, the short. That is awesome, deep bodied stuff. I'm going to have a listen to the pizzicato. And 
just like we were talking earlier about the violins, you can actually go out of the range of the bass. Here's a pizzicato bass way, way up in the, probably the violin range. Back down its natural range. Again, the weird things you can do with sound engine, sound paint, uh, sound engine. Spiccato tap. Of course, velocity sensitive. Plenty of epic hits for you down there as well. So let's explore some of the other shorts that are available. And in order to do that, I'm going to choose the violins and we'll go to the violins under the shorts. We'll navigate down to this one. I'm going to choose is the sword spiccato, which sounds like this. So not at all what you would consider from a traditional violin, but very cool. Uh, what else have we got here? A spiccato tap. Nice. What else have we got here? Another version, a synthcato TF. So this might be a really interesting time to introduce the arpeggiator, which obviously works really well with shorts. Now, what we have here is the traditional arpeggiator. Again, I won't go into any great detail because they do a great job over at Soundpaint's YouTube channel. This particular patch has an arpeggiator in, and if you play with it, one and two and three and four and, So like all arpeggiators, you can have the hold, as is this case, you hold down a chord and it keeps repeating, or you can use a keys to do it, and that means I have to hold my fingers down on the keys, and it follows my fingers. 
Oops, excuse me, let's turn it on. Very nice indeed. And with the arpeggiator, you can control whether it's a the tr traditional arpeggiator features as a chord or as it's played up and down, random. You can choose from the octaves, the number of note repetitions, um, even the length, the synchronization with your door. Lots and lots of possibilities here that you can get really lost in here. Now, the Bartok snaps are also an arpeggiator. And some delay very cool lots of endless possibilities there and again guys i can't even begin to sort of appreciate the depth of what's available here obviously you've got the racks themselves the effects you can add some reverb there's delays that you can hear it's bouncing left and right you can do some really really interesting stuff with this arpeggiator explore even got some presets Wow, very weird, lots of possibilities. Well, there you go. There's a pretty, I hope, a, a comprehensive overview of what's available in Adastra Ensemble strings. And you know what? I still, despite the time we've taken just to get to here, I still haven't really stretched its capabilities. I haven't really shown you about the morphing feature, which allows one particular part of a program to morph into another. Um, you can do all sorts of things like um, controlling the ADSR, the attack, decay, sustain and release. The offset of your samples can be selected here. So you can bite into the start of a sample or way into the sample. The level of detail, you can reverse the samples around um, the time component. There's a legato switch, so you can actually change the nature of the samples or the patch to introduce a legato into a patch that doesn't necessarily ordinarily have it and even the volumes of the legatos voicing this is something that i used um, a little bit you can control the pitch the micro pitch the number of voices that are available um it, it's no end touch this is something i did for me now this is something that i had to get used to my keyboard has a natural low velocity and didn't have a lot of punch, but you can control the uh, the input MIDI curve, if you like. So you get a lot of smash high level. You can set the standard MIDI value of how what your uh, keyboard triggers, the, the value of each key. It's just endless at the moment, and I feel somewhat aggrieved that I just don't have enough time in the whole universe to go through what is indeed possible. Okay, so now I'm going to share with you a short composition I wrote using Adastra Ensemble Strings, and then we'll dissect it, we'll pull it apart a little bit to find out why I made the decisions that I did, and on the other side of that, I'll give you my final thoughts and we'll wrap up today's video.
It's funny, isn't it, how you start out with an idea that you think is going to go in a certain direction, only to find out it utterly takes a detour somewhere that you didn't expect. And that was exactly what happened here with me. Um, how I've pulled this together, let's have a quick look. It's grouped primarily with ensembles and effects that I drew from Adastra. There's the violins, there's some violas, the cellos and the basses I lumped together. Um, and then there's a whole heap of support instruments. There's some harmonic guitar that you heard at the start, which sounds like this. Just a nice little bit of rhythm. Um, I called upon a little bit of the sound paint piano at the end. I'll show you that a little bit later, and plus another piano. Doing a bit of brass to just add some epic bottom end and some hits and cymbal swells. And also, too, I called in a, a bass synthesizer from somewhere, again, just to give that really deep resonance in the bottom end to support the brass. So as the piece opens up, it opens up with the cellies in basses in nothing more than octaves. Actually, no, I beg your pardon, it's about ninths. An octave plus a, a third, I think. Calling in some ostinatos with some shorts. But also too, Put some tension with the drone, perhaps. A simple drone. Thanks, courtesy to Adastra Ensemble, the full tremolo. Building slowly. Simple violin melody. You can hear some thunderous hits down the bottom too. Here we go. Building up into crescendo. And from here, it's really drawing in the core melody that I got these violins to sing for us at the very, very top. Supported by some ostinatos. Now this is straight out of the Adastra ostinato. I also programmed up my own to create the momentum and the rhythm. If you double up the violins, nothing more than literally doubling up. And thicken the strings out with some full ensemble to add some body. I've chucked in some brass, the brass here. Um, not to focus on it because it's not the main uh, reason why we're here, but basically I just gave it a counter melody to support the main melody, which sounds like this. Here's the bass, brass, I beg your pardon. Here's a counter melody and the horns. Some big thunderous hits. piece here I quite liked it in the end I took the sound paint piano so let me just give you those last couple of seconds we come to the huge crescendo and then we have an outro which is a piano with a, an arpeggiator again the sound paint piano plus another piano that I handcrafted an ostinato in and all that is Some block chords with an ostinato. OK, 
courtesy of the free piano you get with sound paint. And then I handcrafted my own version with another piano. And to finally fill it all out, String Ostinato providing support. And there you have it. So, to my final thoughts on Sound Paint's Adastra Ensemble strings. Adastra and Sound Paint together has lifted the bar to create a new palette of possibilities. There is a rich set of articulations that you would expect in any good string library from sustains to legatos to shorts, but also they've also taken advantage of what the sound paint engine can do to create effects and hybrid possibilities. And it's this extra capability that started to distort my mind somewhat. And I won't lie, at first I started to develop a little bit of a love-hate relationship with it because my mind was used to treating string libraries like a traditional string orchestra should faithfully recognizing the full range and articulations available in a conventional string orchestra. But that's a failing here if you have that mindset. You have to open the possibility and take the blinkers off to realize that sound paint engine can take those samples and manipulate and distort into wonderful new hybrid ways. Once I started to warm to that and spend some time to understand the detail and realize the power, that's when I started to really warm and understand what this was all about. And a Duster Ensemble Strings passes the yardstick that I use to measure just about any library. Bang for buck. At $60, the range and depth and completeness of what you have available here is really remarkable. I own plenty of string libraries that are far more expensive than a Duster Ensemble Strings that can do far less. And that alone is worth the entry price. Adastra Ensemble Strings is a worthy entrant into the world of expanding string libraries. And it's one that I'm willing to recommend wholly. So that wraps up today's video. Thank you once again for joining me and spending some of your precious time with me with Adastra Ensemble Strings. Also a shout out to Sound Paint and Trolls and the team for making this product available for today's review. Very grateful guys. And if you love this sort of stuff and you love the content, give the video a big thumbs up. Why don't you subscribe while you're here and share it to share it with all the other friends in your community so they can learn about the latest and greatest breakthroughs in virtual instrument technology. And with that, all there's left for me to say is thank you and we'll see you on the next video.